In today's show, we're looking at buy low and sell high trade targets, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball, on Instagram, Locked On Fantasy Basketball and Substack, joshlloyd48.substack.com. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% 100% online. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Let's look at buy lows and sell highs. A reminder, this is five buy lows and five sell highs. These do not constitute the entirety of buy lows and sell highs. A buy low player is not someone you need to go and grab no matter what. A sell high is not someone you need to get rid of no matter what. It's about getting value in a trade. And if you don't get value, oh well. You either leave the player or you ride out the hot streak. Simple stuff, I think. I hope. Anyway, let's uh well let's do it. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back two weeks to look at how that show performed. Some of these ones were really obvious. Um, so we saw that Christian James McCullum went from 359th to 52nd. He was always going to take a step forward. I think 52nd is probably marginally too high for CJ as we move forward, but the numbers there were obviously going to improve. Jump around, not a big improvement. 98th to 80th. He is a significantly overrated category league fantasy player. He's not this bad. Like He is a top 50, top 40, probably top 30 guy, but not a top 10 or top 15 player. So yeah, I wouldn't say that's a W. That's sort of about even. He's got more improvement to come. Terry Rogier actually went backwards. Yikes. He has bamboozled and hoodwinked me all season. It took me two years to be convinced that he could be a good shooter. And then I did. And he went, you know what, Josh? Stick that up your ass. I'm a bad shooter again. He's actually really bad this season. And I still think there is improvement. I don't know whether he, you know, as we talk about a ton, right? Steals are variable the most out of everything year on year. But he's like half the steal rate of last season. And he can't shoot. So that's a real problem. Darius Garland, hopefully got some buy low there. He's gone from 84th to 34th. Big W on that one. 34th is about right for him, I think. And Halliburton went from 37th to 9th. I think he's going to remain in that first round discussion. Anytime that you can get him for someone who's not a first round player, that would be a buy low win. On the sell highs, Jalen Brown went the other way. He was 9th, he went to 32nd. All is right in the world. Halliburton at 9, Jalen Brown at 32 is correct. That's how it should be, I think. Whereas Brown at 9 and Halliburton at 37, like it was two weeks ago, was inverse. It didn't make sense, and they've reverted back. DeAndre Ayton was 14th. He went back to 65th. We talked about the impact of Chris Paul and what that would mean for Ayton, plus some other of his numbers, which seemed um, unsustainable. He is better than 65, but he's obviously not 15. That's a W. D'Angelo Russell, hmm, I thought he would decrease. He did not. Not enough. Anyway, 24th to 31st. He is still in the sell high window, although last game was pretty putrid. He is really benefiting from Carl Towns' absence and Jordan McLaughlin's absence. I would expect him to fall outside the top 50 in a hard way. So while that isn't a W there, I still think it will be. Marcus Smart went from 41st to 86th. 86th is about right for Smart. So that's a good W there. While Trey Jones was 54th, he went to 101st. And I think that 80 to 100 range for Trey Jones is probably the right area. We have seen that really hot streak that he had cool off and he's come back to reality. So I think majority of those ones, well, no, I know majority of those ones worked out. A couple didn't, but that is what happens when we do these shows. So... Let's talk buy low players. And let's start in Charlotte. And yesterday, I jacked this bloke off. It was PJ Washington Jr. And I stand by that. You do not need to hold and wait for this nonsense to get better. Because it's been terrible. But that is for people in 12-team leagues. Or if you're in a 14-team league or in a 16-team league, or you are in a 12-team league, you're in a strong position, he can probably get better than what he's doing. I, I agree. He's been 243rd in category leagues over the last two weeks and 126th in points leagues. And that's really bad. 
He's averaging under three fantasy points fewer per game, 24 versus 27 and a half. Big difference. And these are the, it's always the thing. And this is one thing, if I'm going to teach you anything from watching this show at any point, is that when someone's in a, in a hot streak or a cold streak, look at their shooting. Because almost invariably, there'll be something stupid going on there that is causing the rankings or the production to slip. And PJ is shooting 17.9% on his threes over the last six games. He's playing 30 minutes a night. His usage is a bit down at 18%. That's maybe the return of LaMelo Ball and Gordon Haywood in there. But he's not an 18% three-point shooter. He shot, he's 32 for the season. He was 37 last season, 39 the year before that, 37 the year before that. So even his overall season numbers are well down. But this is ridiculous. That's got to improve. Also, this is a man who was at 65 from free throws, 62 from free throws, sorry, 72 from free throws, 78 from free throws this season. And he is at, what, three of his last six? 50%. It's impacting him. And two-pointers. Last season, he hit his two-pointers at 60%. Really big improvement. Now, that was a lot of that because he was playing extra minutes at center. But now he can't hit anything. 39% on twos. For a big man, you're joking, yeah? This is why his numbers are down so much. He's averaging eight points in the last six games. 8.6 rebounds. That's shocking. Everything else is basically in line. Get the percentages up. He jumps back to being a fringe 12 and a solid 14-team league guy. There is tons of improvement to come here. And if he gets any of these numbers, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, or two-point percentage near last season's numbers, then maybe he does move back to being a must-roster 12-teamer. I'm not convinced of that, though. Let's look at percentages again. Let's go to Michael Conley Jr. in Utah. It's been rough since he came back from injury. Really rough. 270th over the last two weeks for Mick. 192nd in points leagues. He's averaging just 18.9 fantasy points. And that is not a 12-team league player. In a points league, I can understand not wanting to hold him in a 12-team league. I still think you, in a 10-team, I think you move on. But I think in a, in a 12, you, you want to hold. But look, he's seven fantasy points fewer than his season average since he returned from injury. That is obviously not going to cut it. He's only he's played five games in 28 minutes, so why is it all down? Well, it's really easy. He's hitting 25% from three. Is Mike Conley a great three-point shooter? Like, yeah, he is a, he's a really good three-point shooter. He hit 39, 39, 41, 38 the last four seasons. He's at 25% since he returned. He's at just 36 for the season. There, there is massive room for improvement. Oh, yeah, and also, this is a bloke whose free throws were his last four years. 70, where am, where am I? 80, 86, 83. This season, 72. Last five games, 56. Something's off. Something's off. He's also averaging only 7.8 points per game. He averaged 14 last season. I don't expect him to be a 14 point per game scorer. The usage is way down. But there is just clear indicators here of significant improvement. Free throws, why are they so low? Three pointers, come on. Points, surely he can be a double-digit points guy, surely. And fantasy points are going to go up. He is, I think, again, it, this is a more of a buy low in a 14-team league because in a 12-team league, someone's probably going to drop him. And I, I would add him. But there are concerns about the absolute overall upside of what he's producing. I still think he can score more than what he's doing. I still think he can shoot better than what he's doing from the field and from the line. But maybe he doesn't. But I do know that there's improvement to come from being the 270th ranked player. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Life does not come with a user manual, unfortunately. So when life isn't working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. And sometimes you need someone to help you navigate through life's challenges. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of those challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. And that makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine that is called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. Therapy is great. Like it really helps me trying to balance my um, my work and my life and all that sort of stuff and all of the problems that people go through. Like it is really important to be able to get your mind and get the perspective on things from someone who's trained to help you get through that stuff. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. The world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, 
It's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on MBA. Okay, let's move to the next buy low. And we're in Golden State for this one. And it's Draymond Green. Now, Draymond historically has had real struggles when Steph has been out. We've seen that time and time again, although last game was really good for him, so that's a positive. But he's in a real funk at the moment. 228th over the last two weeks, 211th in points leagues. He's averaging under 18 fantasy points when he's averaging 28 for the season. That is obviously a big, big dip. He's played four games over this time frame. So what has happened? Now, Draymond's averaging 7.8 points. Okay, no one cares. Like, he averages 8.4 for the season. This is what we expect. Eight points per game from Draymond. His assists are actually down from 4.3 to 6.6. But it's not just that. Now, he was on a sell high show a while ago because we were talking about how his shooting wasn't going to stick and it has absolutely died in the ass. Like, it has fallen way off. He is hitting 30, sorry, 46% of his twos. He's at 61 for the season. Now, 61 for the season is quite high. He was at just 59 last season. But... That number, 46 from two, has to improve. He's also a 50% free throw shooter over that time. That is going to improve. But why do we have Draymond Green? The nice out of position assists, the rebounds, and hopefully some defensive stats. Well, they're not there. They're just not there. He hasn't had a single steal in the last four games. And he has had one block in the last four games. That is just not going to cut it. His season numbers at 0.8 steals, 0.7 blocks aren't really that good anyway. He was at 1.4 and 1.1 last season. So there is plenty of room for Draymond to improve those numbers and just get back to being who he is, like an 80 to 90 rank player. He's just had no defensive stats whatsoever. So you, know, you look, Draymond, again, one of those guys that people will be like, oh, I might drop him in a 12 team league. Don't. Throw your worst two players in a trade. But you have to understand when you get Draymond that your points are never going to be good. It's about getting some more assists. It's about getting those defensive stats. And that's what he provides and getting some rebounds. And while the assists, they should jump up back to six. Is it four over the last four games? But he should jump up. It's just get me some defensive stats, my guy. But it's got to make sense on your team. This one's an obvious one. I don't even think I need to run through the numbers here. But people are frustrated with James Christian Middleton. He's 198th ranked player, 166th in points leagues. He's only played 24 minutes a night, and now he's dealing with a knee problem again. Bloody, bloody hell. Wrist injury, ankle injury, now knee problem. That's frustrating. People held on for ages. We didn't expect that he'd sprain his ankle or hurt his knee. We didn't. We knew he had wrist surgery. That took a longer time to come back from. And now, not only... He's had the triple whammy. Longer return from... is a different triple whammy. A new one. Longer return from injury. Low minutes. Bad per minute production. It's like a quintuple um, whammy. Bad shooting. And now another injury. Like, it's all hitting at once. This is still a top 60 player, I think. He's averaging 21 fantasy points. He was at 36 last season. He's averaging 40, he's shooting 40% on twos. He was at 49 last season. This is a guy who was consistently in the 50, 40, 90 club or close to it. Like really close to it. He's hitting 27% of his threes. Even if you don't think he hits back to 40 or even 37, he's not a 27% three-point shooter. And he's averaging 2.6 rebounds. What is it? 5.4 last year. Yeah, look, I could go through and say everything. He steals. 0.6. He was at 1.2 last season. This stuff is, it's obvious. Is he this bad? No. Might it be a slow process? It could be. But like the knee, the knee is the worry. But you don't have to give up much, I don't think, at the moment to get Chris Middleton. Managers get frustrated. I waited all this time, and now this dickhead's hurt again. And he's doing nothing when he's out there. What is the point? You will have that manager. Get him for a top 100 player. You might, you have some short-term pain. But there is nowhere to go but up here with Middleton, I don't think. Let's look at the next one. It's got a Phoenix. It's got a Mikhail Bridges who is in a slump. I think that's fair to say. I don't think you could really argue with that. Bridges, who is over the last two weeks, is the 125th ranked player. 
79th in points leagues. His points numbers aren't that different. 30 fantasy points versus 32. It's a little bit down, but we know he's not the strongest fantasy points league player anyway. That's not where his strength is, is in fantasy points leagues. It's in category leagues where his value comes in insane percentages. And they haven't been there. He just hasn't been able to produce the numbers that he has in the past, which is frustrating. The 30 fantasy points, not, not great, right? But remember we heard at the start of the season, they're going to run more stuff through him and get more assists. And I thought, that's ridiculous. Then Chris Paul went down. His assists started to rise. He's only averaging 1.9 assists over the last two weeks. That's down from his season average of three. Now, last season, he only averaged 2.2, but he was getting more assists. But even that, like that 1.9 is too low. But this is a guy that over the last three seasons, he shot 63% from two, 65% from two, 61% from two. Now, he is well down this season at 51. And then over the last two weeks, he's down even further, 40%. Now, he had that one bad game where he was like two of 26 or something. But that's, it's not just that. It's the entirety of the season that has dragged him down 51%. And 51 is good. But when your fantasy game was really on the back of shooting elite percentages, it's going to hurt. His three-point percentage, which again has been really strong, it's 40% for the season. He's at 32. You pair those two things together and a guy that gets by on really strong percentages, which again are well down from last season, but he's at 36% over the last seven games. He was at 53 last season, 54 the year before that. That hurts. That turns from a positive which from a wing player is hard to get, into a gigantic negative. And that's what's pushed him so far down the rank board. So while I don't think he wows us with big stuff, and some of that two-point percentage stuff just doesn't feel real as a wing player, there's still room for improvement without getting back to past season numbers for uh, Mikhail Bridges. Today's episode is also brought to you by betonline.net, the number one source. For sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis, get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season, basketball. It's all there at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, they've got them also at betonline.net. We've got to have a look at um, week 15. Week 15 weeks. I don't never know what week it is in the NFL. Anyway, we're getting close to the playoffs. So what odds do we want to look at? There's an important match in game. Sorry, a match is a very like Australian English thing to say. Important game in New England, New England, as the Patriots host the Bengals, the steamrolling Bengals. The Bengals are only three and a half point favorites. I love for them to win because I need the Dolphins to hold off the Patriots. Three and a half point favorites the Bengals are over the Patriots in Foxborough on Christmas Eve. And you can check all those odds over at betonline.net. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Don't forget to gamble responsibly. Let's go to sell highs now. I think we've got to go to Sacramento. We have to. Demontis Sabonis, he's been awesome. We talked about him yesterday in the recap show, but he's not this good. I'm sorry. He's the 10th ranked player in category leagues and third in points leagues. Why? How? What's happening? Why are we at this level? Why are his numbers this good? What do we expect? He's been great this season. He struggled early this year, but he's the 15th ranked player overall. 10th over the last week and third in points leagues. As I said, he's averaging almost 53 fantasy points versus averaging 44 for the season. So what, what happens here? Well, 38 minutes a night is a lot. They're needing that from him, but at some point, it does become unsustainable. He's only averaging 33 for the season, and that is going to jump up. But I don't really think that 38 is a sustainable number. So counting stats will just drop because you lose two to three minutes a game. But it's not just that. He's triple whammy in, guys. He's doing it. 65 from two for the year. He's up to 70%. So more minutes, better shooting, more production. And for a guy that was hitting 9% of his threes to, to begin the season, he, remember how dreadful his shooting was to begin the season? He didn't hit a three in the first... Let's have a look. Jesus Christ. In the first 11 games, he hit one three-pointer. One in the first 11 games. He's had, his volume isn't that high on threes. He's only hit 13 for the season, but... That means there's 12 in the next 18 games. So we're getting that number back up there. And he's hitting them over the last seven games at 60%. Again, it is low volume, but it is helping. You go from 8% to 60%, it's a big difference. So the minutes are up. The shooting is up. There will be a slump, I'm guessing. And the, even the two-point percentage. This is a guy that's never really been able to do that. Even the two-point percentage, which across the NBA, two-point percentage is well up this season. I don't really know why. I'd love to figure out why that is. 
But he's he was at 62 last season, 58 the year before that, 57 the year before that. Incremental improvements. And maybe 65 is real. 70 is hard to believe. And five percentage points when the majority of your shots come from two mean that you might lose your field goal percentage down four percentage points. And then that impacts your scoring. And that impacts everything about it. He's averaging 22 and 15 with six assists. I think the assists are relatively real. I'm just a little bit cautious about some of that other stuff. Yeah, so while he's been great, like if someone wants to give you a first round player in exchange, I would do it. But I, I he can be a top 20 player very easily this season. So I'm not sure that I would want to um, sell for that. But top 10, yes. Let's look at another European big man. It's Vucevic. It's big Vucevic. 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 Vuc has had some ups and downs this season for sure. He's the 15th ranked player there over the last two weeks, 37th in points leagues. He's averaging 39 fantasy points versus 36 for the season. So what's happening? He had a really massive run of of, uh, games where he just couldn't convert anything. He was like under 50% in so many games. Like it just kept happening consistently under 50. But that that problem's fixed because he's hitting 68% of his twos. That's up from 58 over the course of the year. And of course, while he's hitting more twos, he's also hitting more threes. 46% 46% from three to bring his season number up to 37%. He hit 31% last season. He was at 40 the year before that, granted. But that was the only season he'd ever been a good three-point shooter. So I don't really know where to value it. What I do know is that when he's on a hot streak of hitting everything from two and everything from three at the same time, that's going to boost all the overall numbers because his overall field goal percentage in the last seven six games is 61%. And there's so much talk about the Bulls and blowing it up and what the hell is going on with that team that I do worry about where that leaves him. He also, he's averaging 0.6 steals for the season. He's at 1.2 over the last two weeks. Now, maybe that's not that big a deal because he averaged one last season, right? So maybe the 0.6 is the outlier. But he has really ramped up um, the field goal percentage efficiency, the three-point shooting, and he's hitting almost two threes per game at that high percentage. So it is on significant volume. Let's go to Philadelphia. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Let's go to the thick hogsman, Tobias Harris, who is 22nd over the last two weeks, 49th in points leagues, averaging almost 35 and a half fantasy points. He's at 33 for the season. I still think that is a little bit high for Toby. So what is happening? Now, interestingly, it's not usage, which I thought it would be because Maxi was out. But usage over the last four games for him, 18, 18 usage, it's not very high. So how is he maintaining this? Now, his usage is at 20 for the season, which I'm not convinced it stays at that level, but that doesn't really matter. But what he is doing is hitting the shots at a crazy level. 71% from two. 44% from three. He's been a great three-point shooter. Don't get me wrong. 42% over the course of the year is great. He's never had that number before. He was 37 last season. But he's also just taking that up an extra level. 44 from three, 71 from two. A true shooting of 71% is insane to think of. It's so high. He hasn't missed a single free throw over the last four games either. And his steal rate is double what it was last season. He's never averaged a steal per game and he's rolling at 1.3. And that's been all season. Maybe that's able to continue. We talk about steals being variable year on year. So maybe that is real. But it's that being real, him playing 38 minutes a night, which is huge. Again, probably going to be a two to three minute decrease somewhere and hitting the threes and twos at extreme rates pushes him this high. He's been great all season. I still believe there is going to be a significant drop-off for Harris, but maybe I am just wrong. But I I think I can get your agreement that he won't stay at a top 25 level, and maybe he can settle top 50. I don't believe it, but maybe he can. We'll stick in Philadelphia, and we'll look at the thick hogs. Not the thick, Jesus Christ. He's not the thick hogsman. It is DeAnthony Melton, the wave pool, who over the last two weeks is 25th versus 45th in points leagues. He's averaging almost 37 fantasy points versus 28 for the season. And like like Harris, he's playing a shit ton of minutes, 38 of them. He's at 30 for the season. That number will probably drop to 24 when Tangles returns, I I would guess. This is not not enough minutes for him to play 30 plus each night. But because there's been injuries to Harden and Maxi for the majority of the season, Melton has been the guy. And he is turning in really strong performances so much of the time. Over the last four games, he's averaging 18, 6, and 3 with almost three steals. That is a gigantic number. And then he's pairing it by hitting 45% of his threes, 57% of his twos, which he has never come close to doing. He's actually at 47 from the, for the season. Like He's never come close to that number. And those minutes are sky high. So everyone knows this. 
everyone knows that his value is high, but we don't know when Max is coming back. So this, we ha- maybe it's Christmas. Maybe it's in three more weeks. If you wait until we hear that Maxi is coming back, you cannot do this. You need to sacrifice short-term value on Harris, but more importantly on Melton. You need to sacrifice. So you need to give. If you get a top 70 guy back here, like you will lose out for the next week most definitely with Melton. But Melton might become droppable in three weeks' time or two weeks' time. That's a distinct possibility. You need to lose value in the short term to gain value once we hit January, February. And that's, it's the time, the time is now on this. When going through these numbers, this is the last one I'm going to do today. I was really surprised to see Kavon Looney was ranked so high. I just, I didn't think it was true. 68th in category leagues over the last two weeks, 90th in points leagues. He's averaging 29 fantasy points. Why? What's happening? How's he doing this? The minutes have been a bit of a roller coaster, but they're not sky high. 25 minutes a game over the last six. Okay. This is a guy, though, who's never been a 70% free throw shooter. He's actually at 65 for the season. But over the last six games, 80. And that takes you from a negative to a, to a neutral slash positive. Right? So that, that takes away or that adds value. It's not giving you big positives. It's taking away a negative. And that helps. So that's one thing. He has been a guy who has averaged half a block. And over the last six games, he's got six blocks. So there you go. You double your blocks. You go from... Below average blocks to a solid positive in blocks. He's averaging 10 rebounds per game. 60 rebounds in his last six games. He averages under eight for the season. He averaged seven rebounds last season. Wiggins' absence is probably boosting that a little bit. He is still top 140 this season, Looney. So, you know, I have been pretty dismissive of his rest of season value. Maybe he is a 12-team league guy. It really comes from two categories, though, rebounds and field goal percentage. And I do think the rebounds drop. And then he moves back from being actually a neutral slash positive in free throws to being a negative there. Now, if you can deal with that negative, that's totally okay. But there is a little bit of be careful of what you're looking at here with Looney. If someone wants to trade you a top 110 player, I would do it. But they might not. But this is more just like, hey, I don't know if you can actually sell Kevon Looney to anybody. But I would be understanding that the production that the currently we're getting from him is going to fall away. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.